turret. It is going to be that flank here from Zazel, but he's by himself. Got ulti as well by the Rex side. I don't Haunter. think you win this. Ooh, he's going for it. He lets the kill spend scary and gets exhausted. 1v3 goes Haunter as the rest of your team tries to fend it off. Make it a 1v4. Haunter flashes out of there. And Golden Guardian's going to finish up the top in him. <laughs> yeah, when I see Sven ulting in on Haunter, the level 12 Rex side diving on this level 17 Fiora. It's not the fight you want, and when no one came in the belly of Zazel there, they just weren't going to have enough damage to actually kill off that Fiora. So, well played by Haunter to actually force them back, survive, buy time for another inhibitor take, and another dragon going to be grabbed up here by Golden Guardians. They just feel like they are in full control, and it's funny to look at the scoreline. You know, when you talk about this game, it feels like Haunter has had a really big impact, and the Fiora is really kind of dictating, I think, a lot of how EG is playing this game. Haunter's Zero, one, and zero, yep. right? You know, it's it's not like the scoreline is really showing you the impact that it has had, but it's been a lot about this pick, and I think it was an intelligent one. You know, anytime you see these, these Sona-type comps, these kind of solo lane or, or really kind of gold-heavy Sona picks, uh, you don't want a 5v5, and I think Golden Guardians have done a great job of, of finding ways to avoid it and finding ways to take fights on their turn. Yep, certainly seems like this is a strategy they're comfortable with. As the the other side of the one four, the four have been playing well also. Yep. Very but, uh, we are going to have to converge in mid lane at this point because there's one more in here to try and take out the third Drake. Also went over Haunts, or actually continued his run there and just decided to solo that one. Yeah, really, all Golden Guardians need to do is wait for the supers to actually push in on these other sides, right? And a lot of it is actually just about the super minions coming in on the bottom side, which you can actually see them pinging down into. You know, it's about this. It's about these waves up here because once those arrive in the base. EG is going to have to send members to clear those out or risk losing what is their last Nexus turret. And once that happens, then the rest of Golden Guardians closes in and takes the triple and hit. I think EG know that they need to find something sooner rather than later, so they will use that Sona Speed to try and force a fight. But again, Golden Guardians know they just have to be patient. Bottom in hip does respawn, but there's still two super minions there for them to deal with. But now they walk in, right? You know, you see Rek'Sai on that bottom. You walk forward. Rek'Sai walks up towards you. You walk back, let the minions do their work. So they are trying to slowly choke them out of this game. But EG is doing a pretty good job of hanging on thus far. You know, they have not lost any damage on this mid lane inhib. The bot lane inhib has respawned. So they're, they're really kind of just staying in it. And it looks like they won't need to rush forward right now. There is Baron to play for in a minute's time, so looks like it's time to recall and reset. And move their vision back around this top half of the map. FBI will take down the Scott Cobra's going to donate it to Closer. That's very polite. <laughs> well, no one's going to get it. Oh, uh, I wonder if they're trying to actually hold on and, and kill it ah. a little bit later, closer to when the Baron's going to be up, because I think they may want to have that active. Uh, so they were just allowing it to reset. I do believe that that may have been intentional. Give her the gold I, FBI I and, and really just delay so that it's up for a longer period of time while the Baron is active. I mean, they're not in a rush, yeah. right? The Super Minion's still streaming into EG's face. Haunter is still a nuisance with his teleport ready in this bottom lane. It's actually stealing the enemy red buff as we speak. So Evil Genius is going to have to find something around this next Baron. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's all about the force, and, and really, they don't have a great comp at forcing, right? This, this is one of the struggles we've seen from a lot of teams in the LCS this split, is when you draft these types of compositions, you're somewhat dependent upon being in a position of control where you're the one forcing at the objective and they have to come to you. When they don't, you either have to do some sort of flank with the Tom Kench ultimate, or you have to look for a Flash Sona ultimate, which puts you in a very vulnerable spot. And Golden Guardians have played very well around that. They have allowed Fiora to get space to do her work on this bottom side and as a result they're in great control and Honsa now feeling like he can take this 1v1 a little bit more aggressively TK will bring Bang in as well so Honsa actually in a 1v3 again but he's a little low this time around will get shut down but that is gonna mean Baron for Golden Guardians yeah the whole squad comes back and does take him out we'll see if they can get there in time I think there's, there's no chance yeah, yeah all right. I mean, they're just gonna go mid lane they, they don't even know right you have no vision in that whole area so Trying to go over there blind is really, really risky. So, Golden Guardians straight the top laner. They do get the Baron. Nice trade for them, unless EG can really make something happen while well, they're plus one members on the map. But they are going to try to really get the most of this. Remember, this is Lich Bane, Death Cap, Sona. Look at that damage on the tower. You are going to be able to shred through this very, very quickly. So, the Inhib Tower is gone. If they can get an Inhib here, or perhaps even more, that does mean a lot. Yeah, they are going to get the Inhib. Golden Blue was actually looking for a pick with a flank instead of clearing the waves. 
Yeah, and Kumo down to that bot side. They should get that outer tower also. So, you know, EG getting a lot of gold back off of that. They get the kill on Haunter. Uh, they do get mid lane turret as well as inhibitor. They get the bot lane tier one. So, it was a good move. You have to be decisive, right? If you actually get into this position where you're in decision paralysis, you will kind of lose on both sides to these types of comps. So we'll see where they're going to go with it next. And, you know, as far as Haunter goes, the Spirit Visage makes a little bit of sense if you want to go for that 5v5. But as far as the pure 1v1, it really doesn't help you much at all versus Kumo, right? You know, like, if you had gone Death Dance or something, your 1v1 is way better. Same thing with Bloodthirster um, or even, you know, some sort of Last Whisper type item uh, to complete that. But because he has gone for this, he is going to be weaker in the 1v1 as a result. A little awkward on timing, though, as Golden Guardians will start this again. Is soul, this remember? is the Ocean Soul Drake. EG are going to have to challenge the reset. It was a little awkward spend, though. Might just go ahead and take it. Does get it. Three apiece now. It's closely got to get up a bang. And finally, Ulti on the one. But close up. Beautiful stopwatch. Just keeps found the flank. But I think he's maybe not wanted to flank there. Just going to get CC down in the stone plate. He goes to Jazuke. Zoning them out with the ball as Keith will flash, but still fall. This could, this could be game. They could actually run it down mid and look to end this now. They steal away, smite away that Ocean Soul. Svenskara down two levels against the Lee Sin. He's the one who lands the smite, and EG are looking to end this. Yep, Zazel put the soup highway straight down mid lane, and EG are at least going to pressure here. 4v4 as Haunter returns, but EG still have it. Going to look for the shockwave. They fight it onto FBI. Close, looking for the kick. Just going to shut down onto Jazuke. Close up. Somehow picks him out of the crowd. Svenskeren low is going to fall, and Golden Guardians still stay in this game. Yeah, now it's turning around. They can TP for this. Both the soul laners uh, have TP. The bot laner going to TP as well. Oh, wait, they're still going. Close oh to get shot down. No, EG are going to keep chasing. We're going to base race on our hands. Oh, EG could actually win this, potentially. They still have the Lich Bane damage here. This is turning really, really crazy. There's only one Nexus Tower. I don't know where the wave is, though. Abelios is on going. Though. On to deck, Keith's gonna have to buy time. FBI, he's the one that has to win for the team. TP back in, it's gonna be canceled. FBI, open Nexus. What a dramatic finish, but Golden Guardians will pick up their first LCS win of 2020. One of the craziest endings to a game I have seen in a long time. Golden Guardians looked like they might be in a position to lose that game as EG was barreling down mid lane. Then they get a couple kills. They TP to look to end the game themselves and EG just turn around, try to end the game again. And we're almost able to pull it off. That was the slimmest of margins, but credit to Golden Guardians leaving FBI in their opponent's base. They knew he would have the damage to finish it off solo. They bring back the one member. Golden Glue comes back to help defend. Haunts are buying some time for the Syndra to get back to base and hold on for their first win of the split here and what was a really interesting game against CG. I, I love how much tr like trading happened, basically, even towards the very end of the game, with the bases almost getting traded. Uh, kind of a complex one. Like a very, yeah. You don't play 1-4 like this especially very often, but I think navigated well by both teams. Golden Guardians just, I think it practiced it a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that it really is split-second decisions, you know, that, that actually end up deciding the game. Uh, this was incredibly close. I don't think EG made the wrong call to try to end the game because, you know, they had been getting peeled apart. There was still the potential of the soul going over in the next second to their opponents. So they had what they thought would have been, you know, damage to end the game. There was no flashes on most of the carries from Golden Guardians. They were very close to taking down Ophelios and... He survived and healed back up to full almost instantly. And then the game, of course, at that point is then done. But, you know, if they are able to land lethal damage, if they are able to actually take out one of those carries immediately, if FBI died, the game would have been over, right? So it is those really, really small execution errors or, or really execution success on the side of Golden Guardians yeah, that made the difference. Lots of little things certainly added up, but Crazy Golden game. Guardians did take the game. For more on the win, though, Rip is standing by with a man from down under with a back door. Take it away. I am indeed joined by FBI. Golden Guardians with the golden defense as they take the victory. Walk me through those few last calls. That seems so intense, FBI. Um, it was pretty chaotic. I think we just lost the Dragon Team fight, so everyone was kind of like, oh. But um, I think we managed to stay calm. Like, it was kind of just quick thinking. Like, me and uh, Grayson just um, thought about TPing into the base fast. Uh, I'm glad it worked out, yeah.
Absolutely amazing. Talk to me a little bit about that bot lane. Sona Tom Kench, uh, one of the coaches actually tweeted, we know exactly what to do against this lane. We play it in your practice. So what was the kind of idea to stop the Sona Tom Kench from your eyes? Um, I don't think there's anything really you have to do in lane versus Sona Tom Kench. It's kind of just like we're both scaling, but um, we've had experience playing versus Sona Tom Kench like in previous metas. So it was like, a, it was just like farming, you know, so. Just make sure you don't die. Yeah, yeah, just make sure I don't die. <laughs> and I want to talk to you a little bit about all the Oceanic players coming over. How awesome has it been to see Ryoma, King, Fudge? Have you been able to hang out with any of these players and kind of show them around? Yeah, for sure. I'm really close with Ryoma, and I'm really happy he got the win, played pretty well. Um, and yeah, we're all just like good friends and hope we will succeed. Awesome, FBI, thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on the win. And we are going to throw back to the analyst desk to break down that game. Thank you, Rib, and thank you, FBI. Exciting game. Exciting game there. Yeah, exciting. Certainly, you know, a couple of missteps, but but a really fun game to watch. Nail butt at the very end, and Golden Guardians pick up win number one. Everything from that Ocean Drake onwards was yeah. just like, what am I, what? This yep. one started with the, this is after they go for the FBI pickoff, and now that they've left him in the top lane while Hanser recalls, this was actually a really smart decision, knowing that they didn't need to recall everyone to stop this push uh, from the side of EG. Hanser dies, we see him laughing. He knows as long as uh, Aphelios is still on the other side of the base taking yeah. it. Uh, the, the sketchy part was when FBI dropped to like 20% HP and almost died. Yeah, I think Hanser's job there is correct. It was just to run in and die and mm -hmm. buy some time. Uh, I think the double TP was pretty sketch. As you saw, like EG was just about to run it down mid instantly, yeah. but luckily they saw a Baron buff, so they got one recall and were able to defend. But that was a really, uh, those were a lot of plays that were being like thrown together sporadically. And I thought yeah. EG is a team that should be able to do well in those situations because mm. they're like more coherent, like they've been together a bit longer and they've been in those late game scenarios a few more times. I think you can see one of their weaknesses though about getting too hyphy. Like when they chunked out uh, FBI underneath the double turrets, you know, Jazuke's in there and then he's oh, yeah. dead. And so now you don't have an Orianna to help shield. And you can kind of, I think, slow play that with. Sir, uh, excuse me, Sona and Orion get so much yeah, shield and shielding you that you can kind of just sit in front of their turrets and hopefully chunk them down. Yeah, so the, the siege plan didn't really work. I do want to focus in on the Sona Tom Kench lane. Um, specifically, uh, Prala, you were talking to me about uh, your attempts um, last year actually at, at trying to get Sona Tom Kench to work with your team. Yeah, so on 100 Thieves, we actually played the Sona Tom Kench and Sona, Sona Tarek because it was such a meta bot lane. And uh, we actually had so much trouble like getting through the early game and eventually we finally got that. And then we had to figure out mid game team fights and it took us so long to figure out how to play it. It started getting out of meta. So seeing Bang start to play it now, it's like, it's pretty refreshing. And I'm pretty sure like Zazel has a big impact on that. Cause on C9, I know they played so much Sona Taric because they're always on weak side. So seeing them pull it out again, I'm honestly, I'm not that happy to see Sona back. Okay. But I'm happy to see Bang play Sona now. It's cool to see the development yeah, of yeah, his of skill set on a champion. I hate Sona Tom Kent. Yeah, not my favorite. Uh, I do like that it's like a cool strategy, but yeah. it was one of those things where you saw Sven Skaren die in one of those replays. That shouldn't really be happening with Ori TK. It should make Syndra's life really yeah. hard, but I think on three separate mid lane 4v4 occasions where that should be their strong point. The Fiora is the problem. It should not be these 4v4s. They actually ended up trading one for one or even lost out on them because someone would get bursted by Syndra. They did save someone once, but that that indicated a, a really poor communication. Maybe he should, just should have gotten more MR just to be a ball delivery system. I'm not exactly sure exactly how they wanted to address that problem, but there's no way you should be dying in those that in those 4v4s. Yeah, I mean, I will say like the Sona Tom Kench team comps are very special because it's more of countering what the enemy does. So in this one, like they want to survive burst from Cinder when they fight. So yeah, Rek'Sai going in and dying very quickly is obviously they're not super comfortable. He's too far away from Tom Kench, doesn't understand Sona's healing yet. And same thing with Ori flashing in later. It's like, yeah, they want the fights to be so long. And then on the other side, they want to end like very quickly. They want to disengage and get out. They don't want to have these long fights. Yeah, and of course the, the overall fight sort of plan right, is a lot of 4v4s, right? Golden Guardians had a plan from the get-go. They saw the blind Aatrox, went Fior, and then from that point on, the entire game was, okay, four people on one side of the map, one person on the other. Hanser, never join us, yep. basically ever. We will try to find the kite back. And, and I know mistakes were made. This was not the cleanest game, but I have to give Golden Guardians credit for the fact that they, they had a very clear plan and they stuck to it and, and played to the comps outs the entire game. Yeah, yeah, I think like the time that they caught Kumo uh, in mid lane, like they did a really good job of finding people in the grouped up situations and killing them there to stall them out for their split push. Yeah, I think it sounds really silly, 
But telling a team, or sorry, telling your top lane, Fiora, like, do not, TP, <laughs> do not TP to this fight. It, this fight might be great. It's awesome. We love it. You stay over there. You stay there and you right. like it. So them having kind of the discipline to play that out, I think is really good because, yeah, again, sounds really simple on paper, but in the game when you're not joining a fight when your team's winning, it's like kind of counterintuitive to what you've been learning. So. Right. It's, it's a completely different line of play to like, well, yeah, I, I mean, this this is an expected value positive team fight for us. Like, if I show up, we probably get an extra kill, and and so that's useful. No, no, no. 50 CSD is yeah, the win just, condition. Yeah, get like, out of here. Just be up a Triforce, and the game just ends if we're not, you know, hands off keyboard. I right? mean, yeah, so. you saw that in the base the, the time where people started having to collapse and TK <laughs> yeah. and multi man, and then eventually they start winning through the split push by opening up other avenues. Yeah, yeah. that was that was really good because they uh. So Hanser is purposely overextending inside the base while the other four are at Baron. They're not in mid lane, they're not like clear in vision. They're literally outside of Baron pit, ready to take it. So Hanser's overextending on purpose to like make a mistake. Yeah. And they're just trying to get him. And yeah, Sona's comps aren't the best at stopping split push. They yeah. need a fight. Yep. Well, of course, well done by Golden Guardians. They move up to one and two with more games to play this week as well. And as we wrap up the LCS matches of the day, let's see how the teams stack up. Cloud9, 3-0, oh, but so is Dignitas. FlyQuest didn't play today, so they are 2-0. Oh. Only three undefeated teams still, but the other two that played, of course, did win today. And now let's check in on how the analysts did on the predictions front. Mm. Mm. We can little, skip today. Mm. little hit and miss. Shout out Mark Z. 500 still yeah, doesn't feel yeah. great. I mean, you're 6-8. and eight. I wouldn't call that 500. I meant oh, we're tied now. Day. Yeah, yeah, on I the day. Not the best. I, yeah, I mean, the EG Golden Guardians won. I'm surprised Golden Guardians took that. The CLG 100 Thieves one felt pretty close to me. Even the Dig TL, like, I I, had yeah. not, I was not confident. Well, I think so. most of these games were like, it felt pretty 50 50 up into like 20, 25 minutes, and then one team started to break apart. Yeah. No one had like a very dominating game where like, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe this predicted uh, the other way. Yeah. Other than C9 IMT, which was yeah. everyone predicted. Predict Every CL. person should have predicted it that yeah, way, that, and it was indeed fair. correct. So the LCS returns tomorrow with Evil Geniuses and TSM kicking things off right at noon after LCS countdown. Then Team Liquid faces FlyQuest with three more matches before we call it for Sunday. That's all tomorrow. Gonna be some hype stuff. I mean, the fact that uh, Immortals and Golden Garden is now at one and two. Um, I think people had expectations of what were the bottom four teams coming into the split. That has very much shaken up with how good FlyQuest look, with how good Dignitas look. Someone's gotta kind of fill into that non-playoff spot role. and. and and CLG. Yeah, yeah sadly. I mean, <laughs> CLG and TSM, two of the teams that have kind of fallen down there. But I mean, I personally would love to see the Golden Guardians climb. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of them and their players. So that'd be cool to see, you know, go up to 50 50, and then it's a pretty good end of the week for them. Now, if you need more league competition, jump over to our Academy channel for Cloud9 Academy versus Immortals Academy. It's going to be hype. Now, that does it here for us for the LCS. Good night from us here. Azale and Pastry will see you on the Academy stream after the break.